Hi, my name is Michael and in this video I'd like to show you our Amazon business. I would like to show you the exact systems we developed and the team we built that allowed us to scale to 8 figures. It took me and Miles almost 4 years to get to this point and you probably know Miles and the rest of the story from his YouTube channel. If you are like me you always wonder how these businesses solve the problems you are facing and what they actually do on a daily basis to grow. Well. And I'm going to show you just that in this video. And hopefully you will be able to use this as an inspiration for your own business. All of this I'm about to show you was created with a single goal in mind. We wanted to remove our operational bottlenecks to unlock the full potential of our brand. And the plan was actually quite simple. The first step was to streamline our business operations. We wanted to make sure that it is as easy as possible to run and maintain our business. The second step was to build an efficient team. We wanted a small team that would help us run and grow the business. And the third step was to come up with a growth plan. We wanted to analyze the opportunity and choose just a few things we knew we could do well. And that's pretty much it. So let's dive in. Okay, we are going to cover all three steps. The first one is business systems, second one is team, and the third one is the growth strategy. So let's dive in. The first step while defining the business systems is to take a look at the process map. So we wanted to have a big picture view of our Amazon business, right? So if we look at our business, what's happening in the business, right? We have some product development, maybe supply, uh, marketing, operations, customer service, and all of that, right? That's all of the core processes in your business. But we really wanted to step out of the business and understand the difference between working in a business versus working on a business, right? So we wanted to take a look at the business as a whole to see the big picture view. And there's an incredible book I can recommend that will really help you understand this. It's called The E-Myth Revisited. And I read it twice in one weekend and it really changed the way I look at the business. So we follow a thought process where we want to design the process map, right? So what's going on in the business? As I said, we develop a product, we work with supplier, then we forecast inventory, then we optimize pricing PPC, and then we reply to customers and so on, right? And if we really think about this, we can narrow it down and create a visual overview. And the visual overview can look like this. So this would be our Amazon FBA business process map. As I said, it all starts with product development, going all the way to supply, inventory management, where reorders are triggered. Then we have operations, which is usually optimizing, pricing, dealing with Amazon, listing variations, and so on. Then we have marketing, our marketing campaigns, optimizing PPC campaigns, and so on. And then we have customer service, and we can identify potential product improvements there, which feeds back into product development. So we can say that this is the full view of the core processes of our Amazon FBA business. Okay, so what about planning, finances, hiring, and so on? So we called these processes support processes where we have management, human resources, accounting, and business development, right? So these are not the core processes, but they help us to run the business. So in full, it looks like this, right? So we combine the core processes with the support processes. The second step was to design flowcharts to really understand the core processes as they are, right? So we use flowcharts to visualize core processes and determine key decision points and also define accountability. And I will talk about that a little later. So let's zoom in on supply and inventory management, right? We identified this is a core process so what's happening in the process? What are the key functions of the process? So this is a big picture view of inventory management and supply, how it works together. Uh, don't worry, I will zoom in in a second. But as you can see, it all feeds nicely together, right? And so we can see that the inventory management supply, right? So let's zoom in on the inventory management. So you can see the specific tasks there, right? So we have populating inventory planner, we have the milestones, in this case, desired purchase order quantity determined, and then we have the decision points, right? So you can see that the decision point is here, and if it's confirmed, we can continue. If not, it, go back. it goes back, right? So this is 
fairly simple, but why do we design these flowcharts? And as I said, we really want to visualize the core processes. In this case, we are looking at supply and inventory management. We also want to determine the key decision points. This will be important later where we introduce the team. And we also want to define the accountability. Once again, that will help us to set the expectations for the team, right? So we will then follow up on these flowcharts with task management. And our task management software goes hand in hand with these flowcharts, right? We will keep all of our tasks and projects under one roof, and we will manage the tasks there, we will manage the team and cooperate from there. So if we take a look at the specific step to populate inventory planner, obviously we are not going to list all of the steps in the flowchart, right? There are multiple steps. Uh, it can be a little bit more complicated process. It can be routine, right? Let's say creating new PO, it's a little bit more complicated that, than just that. So how do we define it? And we will define it in task management, right? So looking at the inventory planner, we can see a task like this, where we have the objective, what we are trying to achieve, what we are trying to do, what is the desired outcome, and obviously the actual steps to perform that particular task, populating the inventory planner. And as you can see, the steps also feed nicely to the next step, which would be creating the actual PO. So if we can look at the process, we can see that Populating the inventory planner, getting the desired purchase order quantity is the first step. And then we move to creating the actual PO, right? So as you can see, already in these steps, it feeds into the next task because the end of this task is to create the next one. So we basically follow the flow chart, right? And if we take a look at creating new PO, that's also a task in Asana. So we have a template for that, right? Once again, we have objective, we have the inputs. As you can see, one of the inputs is the inventory planner. We just use to determine the order quantity, desired outcome, and obviously the steps. This is a little bit more complex. So we have all of these subtasks and those subtasks also have specific steps like to determine order quantity, draft shipping plans, and so on, right? So as you can see, it really feeds and goes one after another according to our flowchart, right? As you can see, once we place the PO, we prepare the shipment. And the next step are the templates and trackers. So our goal was to build assets that will save us time over and over again, minimizing the required inputs, right? So for example, I would rather spend five hours now to coming up with the template, to coming up with the checklist, so I can then save 30 minutes every week down the line for years to come, right? So you have to spend a little bit more time in advance, do the work, prepare the foundation, and then utilize the asset so you can save the time over and over again. And it also helps you to minimize the errors, right? If you have the checklist, the template you follow, it is unlikely that you will make a mistake. And this is also very helpful once we start delegating, right? And we can also set up routines, due dates, and reminders. And if we set up recurring tasks, reminders, and due dates, it really helps us to free up the mental capacity. So we don't have to write everything down in our to-do list, have all of these reminders and everything. We are sure that we have everything in, us, in, in our task management software, and we use Asana for that. And we can set up the recurring date, how often, when, which days, and so on, right? So this is extremely helpful to free up your mental capacity. And the best thing about this is that most of our to-do lists are automatically generated for us, right? So that saved me a lot of my mental capacity because I logged in in the morning into my Asana and my to-do list for the day was already there. So, Going back to our flowchart, this is what it looks like, right? So the populating inventory planner, we have a spreadsheet for that, right? That's the template we use that simplifies our work. We just put in the numbers and we get the outcome, right? Which is the desired order quantity. So we have a template for that and it saves us a lot of time. Then we have 
create new PO, right? We have the checklist I just showed you in Asana, and we also have a template, so we don't have to create the PO from scratch every single time. So we already have the template in place with all of the formulas, so we would just plug in the numbers from our inventory planner, and it calculates everything automatically, right? And the same goes for our shipments. Once we fill in the PO, we then have uh, the template for the shipment, and everything is already there, automatically feeding from the PO to this new template. And once again, we have the check checklist we can follow. So as you can see, the process is very streamlined, and it, it is actually very simple when we look at it one step at a time. So we also use trackers, so we can stay on top of it without going into much detail, right? So if you have a team, you are the manager, and you want to see what's going on, it's very good, very good idea to have a tracker you can use and you can rely on, right? So if I want to take a look at our active shipments, I would open our shipment tracker and I can see all of the tasks, what, what is the status of each shipment right here. So this is, this is also very useful, so you don't have to uh, ask your supply manager every other day if you want to look up something, the del estimated delivery dates and so on. So everything is already here. So we are also minimizing the, the required communication between team members, right? We are in the different time zones. So it may not be convenient to hop on a call every day, every week. So having these trackers in place so I can quickly see what's going on. Uh, if you have at one time, you had like 30, 40 shipments, everything is here. I can just open the spreadsheet and see what's going on to make sure that uh, we are on top of it. Obviously, it doesn't have to be perfect. I understand that it can seem intimidating to set up everything like this, right? But you have to begin somewhere, right? And it makes sense to begin with a process you know well, let's say supply. And as I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to work, right? You really need to save some time. You maybe set up the template, checklist, and it will save you time down the line. Okay, team is the second part. So first of all, let me clarify the mistakes we made. The first mistake was delegating without a proper business structure in place. And I think that this is quite a common mistake because it's very hard to delegate if you don't have the process in place, right? Because if you don't have the process, you don't really know what exactly you want them to do. And if you don't, want, if you don't know that, it's very hard to transfer the accountability, right? And if you don't transfer the accountability, you will end up deciding and assigning every single task over and over again, and you will never be removed from that particular process, right? So that's a mistake number one. Mistake number two, hiring multiple general VAs, right? It's great to have a system, but sometimes it's tempting to hire multiple assistants and just try to delegate random tasks you don't want to do, right? Which is similar to mistake number three, trying to delegate things we just don't want to do rather than trying to delegate specific processes or part of a specific process, right? And the fourth mistake is overlooking their competence level, right? So if you hire someone, you have an assistant, that's perfect, they can help you a lot, but you should not expect them to take over and take the accountability and ownership of a complex process in your business, right? So you can have an assistant, but don't really expect them to run your full supply chain, right? You can try to train them, but usually overlooking the competence level can be a mistake. So now let's talk about accountability. When I talk about team, I mentioned accountability multiple times, and I think that this is a crucial step. So we want to transfer the accountability to our team. And as I said, we also want to minimize deciding and micromanaging. So our goal is to free up our time and also our mental capacity. So if we are still deciding, it's very hard to step back from the process, right? You still have to be on top of it to make the decision for your team. And that's not a proper way to do it, right? A better way is to really transfer the accountability so you can step back and do your thing. So to transfer accountability, we defined three important steps. First of all, we need to let them know what they should do, which are, is setting up the expectations, and we are doing that with the flowcharts, and I will show you that in a minute how. 
right? The second step is to define how, where we have the defined process and obviously some training period. And we define this with our procedures, templates, and so on, the structure I just showed you. And the third step is also why. We have to align the incentives. And those are defined with KPIs and clear bonus structure, so they are motivated to stay on track. So looking at our flowchart, first of all, we define what they should be doing. And for that, we use specific colors, right? So blue color, uh, in this case, can be the manager, and green color can be the supply manager, right? That was in our case. So the supply manager knows exactly where I step in, what are the key decision points I have to make before they proceed, and what are the tasks they should be doing. And also, they these tasks are already defined for them in Asana with templates and SOPs, right? That's the how and why, obviously, as I said, we defined KPIs and clear bonus structure. So they knew exactly what they have to do to receive the bonus, right? And lastly, we have a team structure. So as I said before, our goal was to keep our operations lean. We had to create a streamlined business so we were able to move the needle with a really small team. So this is our business structure. So as you can see, on top of the overview, we have Miles as the owner, visionary strategic planning, risk analysis, and so on. Then me, Michael, the general manager for process development, branding, product development, and so on. Then we had brand manager, supply manager, customer service agent, and obviously we had a VA and graphic designer, but those were mostly contractors. So basically just three people were working full time in this business, which was me, brand manager and supply manager, right? So I think it's important to stress out that it is possible to scale the business with a small team. But as I said, it was necessary to make sure that every single process in the business is streamlined. So we were able to achieve more with small team. And the last point is the growth strategy. So we are going to start with a problem we defined calling the problem of abundance. So basically when we looked at the opportunity out there and there's such an abundance of choice that basically the choice became the problem, right? You have so many options, so many opportunities that it's easy to get paralyzed or jump from one thing to another right? Without actually committing to something. So our plan was to really choose the path of least resistance. And we had a specific goal in mind we wanted to achieve. So we were able to define the path for our business, right? So let's say that the business is currently doing $500,000 per year and you want to get to 2 million. And each circle represents one opportunity, right? We are talking external traffic, branding on Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, like uh, maybe expanding to new marketplaces, maybe creating a new brand, right? So many opportunities for your business. But you have the ultimate goal in mind. You want to go from 500 to 2 million per year. So you can choose just a few opportunities that will get you there, right? And remove the rest, completely eliminate it. And once you are left with this list, turn that into an action plan, a growth plan for your business. Where do you plan to start? What's the next step, right? And how will you eventually get there? Obviously, you will have to pivot along the way, but it really is extremely valuable to have a clear idea of your strategy to get to your goal. So you are not distracted by everything else, right? And when I talk about eliminating, I really truly mean most of the other options. We eliminated like 80% of the options that were on the table, right? And it may feel like you are leaving money on the table, but that's not really the case. You have to choose a few and the rest is a distraction. And to make the right decision and choose the right few, you have to consider your resources, your time and money, your existing assets, your existing processes, team, your expertise. For example, you have an email list, so you can consider that as well. And also your constraints. What are your bottlenecks, right? And that will help you to define the path of least resistance for your business. 
So our path of least resistance was simple. Product expansion, listing optimization, and marketplace expansion. And that was it. And as you can see, it all nicely works together. If you expand with products, you can optimize the listings, right? That was our strength. We knew exactly how to optimize. We had a strong brand. So listing optimization goes hand in hand with product expansion. And obviously marketplace expansion also goes hand in hand with your product expansion because you are just moving the products you already develop to new marketplaces using the listing assets you develop, right? So as you can see, these three steps and opportunities are very similar, but it helped us to scale the business because this was our sole focus. We were not looking at uh, external traffic, uh, branding outside of Amazon, right? There were so many things we had to leave on the table just to focus on these few things. So in a summary, this is what we did. We developed a proper business structure. We streamlined our core processes. We built an efficient team and we defined our growth strategy. Well, and that's it from me for today. I hope you feel inspired to take action. And if you do, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I plan to cover similar topics in detail, such as systems, hiring, delegation, and so on in the future. You can also click the link below to join our free Facebook group and join us on one of our live Q&A sessions. And that's it for today. See you next week.